in Daniel 6 is that I bet many of you have never caught in verse uh, 22 that Daniel actually credited the angel of the Lord from saving him from the lions and from many discussions that we've had on the angel of the Lord, that figure is who? It's Jesus. Uh, it's kind of a different way to think about it because usually we're, when we see Daniel in the lion's den story, whether it's, you know, in a, in a book or uh, in a media movie or something like that, we always kind of see him, what, in there by himself, right? And that we're just, the lions are just staying away. Um, but he's giving credit that the angel of the Lord actually protected him throughout that whole night. And this actually mirrors chapter 3's fiery furnace with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Um, everyone there has always kind of recognized that there was that fourth figure in the fire that stopped you know, them from being burnt alive. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar said, why do I see four when I threw in three? And there, you know, we see this figure is called the Son of God, or in some translations they'll say the Son of Gods, because it's Nebuchadnezzar, he's pagan. Um, but also 328 said that, again, God sent his angel. And so this, I kind of find all this stuff uh, pretty neat, because uh, you end up seeing uh, how much Jesus is actually in the book of Daniel over and over again. Uh, in chapters 2 through 7, uh, we know that he's the uncut stone, uh, the son of God, the angel of the Lord, and the son of man figure. And in chapters 8 and 10 through 12, we see him standing on the two rivers. And from our recent discussions on, on the Godhead is that we know that he is God. He is the sovereign Lord ruling in the midst of his angelic host. And what this all does is that, you know, we see him in every single chapter and kind of with that mindset is, you know, what's the most controversial uh, chapter in all of Daniel? Chapter 9, the 70 weeks prophecy. And I would say then if he's showing up in all the rest of them is that he's in chapter 9 as well. And why I say that is because when you look at the six points of the 70 weeks prophecy, what are, what's going to be accomplished by it is that only a divine savior could have these things be checked off. No human could do this. And that my point here is that he is mentioned by Gabriel as the Mashiach Nagid, uh, sometimes called the anointed prince in a lot of translations, and that also in there that he was prophesied to be executed. Now, why show all this is because, well, if on the critical side, uh, the non-believing person, whether a Jew or a Gentile, is that when they see this, is that they just cannot buy into the idea that the prophecy of the Messiah would be executed happened years and years and years in advance. Um, they reject the messianic interpretation, and but you know when you get into that possible debate, is that say, hey, look, uh, we see this divine figure everywhere else in the book. Why would he not be in chapter nine? That would be a question. Uh, they want to deny the uh, Messiah in there, but this is just another angle to take with them. And all of it ultimately points to what? This divine figure always ruling in the everlasting kingdom. Reminder, hit the subscribe button below, turn on the notification bell, hit the like button, and leave a comment. And don't forget to visit us at JustScripture.org. And in the meantime, stay salty.